In this video, I'm going to look at the reactions of the transition elements. And the reactions that I'm going to look at are those in the table there. So what we'll do is we'll take each one in turn and we'll explain what's going on in the reaction. We'll look at the observations and we'll name the type of reaction as well. So we'll start with the reaction between aqueous copper 2 plus ions and aqueous chloride ions. So there's the reaction there. So you can see that we're starting off with the copper hexa aqua 2 plus ion, which is blue. We're reacting that with chloride ions, so four in this case, and we produce this new complex ion, CuCl4 2 minus, and six waters. So this is an example of a ligand substitution reaction and that's because the six water ligands are replaced or substituted by these four chloride ion ligands. The colour, blue solution, going to yellow solution. And often when you do this in the lab, the actual test tube that you're carrying out the reaction in looks green and that's because you've got a mixture of blue and yellow present due to this being in equilibrium. The next reaction we'll look at is Cu2 plus aqueous plus hydroxide ions. So there's one way of writing the reaction equation or you can write the shorthand version which looks like that. So in this reaction again we're starting with the copper hexa aqua 2 plus ion which is blue and we're reacting it with two hydroxide ions and we're forming this copper compound which is copper 2 hydroxide. The full formula looks like this and it's a blue solid precipitate and because of that it's classed as a precipitation reaction. Now it looks like it's a ligand substitution reaction because it looks like two water ligands have been substituted by two hydroxide ions. That's not actually what's happening. I will explain fully what's going on in a couple of slides time. The next reaction is copper 2 plus aqueous with aqueous ammonia. There's the reaction. So again we start with this copper hexa aqua 2 plus which is blue. Two ammonias makes the same precipitate. So that will become clear after the next slide why we get the same precipitate which of course is going to have the same appearance blue solid or blue precipitate and because of that it's a precipitation reaction. So to explain what's going on in those two reactions, we need to have an awareness of the acidity reaction of the hexa aqua ions. So when you put any hexa aqua ion in water, it actually exists in an equilibrium that looks like this. So what's happening is one of these water molecules is losing an H plus ion and forming this complex here. And there's that H plus ion there. And that's why it's known as acidity reaction, because H plus ions are acidic. And because this is charged, it still dissolves in the water, so we don't actually see anything. However, if we add any base to this, so hydroxide ions or ammonia, we remove those H plus ions on the right, and so the equilibrium shifts further over to the right and causes the loss of another proton. And so that would set up this next equilibrium. Now because this is neutral, it can't dissolve in the water anymore. And so we actually see a solid precipitate. So overall, we can write the equations that you saw on the previous two slides. So I'll just show you those again. So with the hydroxide ions, we can write that one. And with the ammonia, we can write that one there.
So the final copper 2 plus reaction is the one between aqueous copper 2 plus ions and excess ammonia. So that's what happens. The blue solid hydroxide precipitate um, undergoes ligand substitution with the excess ammonias and we get this complex ion formed here. Soluble in water and so we see a solution. It's deep blue in colour. So we can speed up now because we've ex hopefully we've explained those reactions now. So the manganese 2 plus reactions, the hydroxide ion reaction is this one here. There's the shorthand version. Exactly the same things going on. The base is reacting with the H3O plus ions and causing the production of this neutral hydroxide precipitate which is pink, or you can call it buff coloured precipitation reaction, of course. The ammonia reaction, very similar to the copper one we've just seen, and there it is there. Iron 2 plus now, so seeing some very similar reactions now. You can see this is going from pale green to a green solid precipitate and there's the shorthand version and of course precipitation again. The ammonia reaction similar to before pale green solution green solid precipitate. Iron 3 plus now I'm sure you can predict what's going to happen there's the, the full version of the equation. Yellow solution to orange solid precipitate would be the observation. And there's the shorthand version of it. And finally, the ammonia reaction. There it is there. So the final transition metal we'll look at is chromium 3 plus aqueous. So with the hydroxide ions, we're going to get this reaction here. So we've got a violet solution going to a green solid precipitate. And of course, you can simplify it to that equation there. Now there's an extra reaction involved with this one. We need to know what happens in excess hydroxide ions. And we get this reaction here. So what's happening is the hydroxide ions are removing more of the H plus ions from the remaining water ligands. And so we end up with six hydroxide ions on the chromium, three plus. So we end up with a CrOH6, three minus ion. And because it's charged, it can dissolve in water. And so we get this solution, which is dark green in colour. Chromium 3 plus aqueous and ammonia. So back to the sort of reactions we've seen before. So we get this one here, violet solution again to green solid. Precipitation, of course. And finally, if we add excess ammonia, we get this ligand substitution reaction where all of these ligands here are substituted by six ammonia ligands and we go from a green solid to a purple solution.